Welcome to this first tutorial in series of six, which is called Analyzing Spectral Data with Multivariate Methods. The first topic is Introduction to Multivariate Data Analysis. My name is Lars Jeske, I'm the product manager of KMO Software. KMO Software was established in 1984 and is recognized as leaders in multivariate data analysis today. We have offices in Norway, USA, Japan, India, Australia, and we have distributors worldwide. We have a long history in spectroscopic applications, and we work with many leading vendors of scientific instruments. Our two main software products is the Unscrambler X and Unscrambler X Process Pulse. The first one, Unscrambler X, is a multivariate analysis and design of experiment software. It has direct import of spectroscopic formats, interactive graphics, and a range of analysis and validation tools. Process Pulse is uh, a software for atline or online process monitoring. It has flexible configurations, diagnostic plots, and a set of alarms to notify you when a process moves out of specs. First, let us go through a little bit of the motivation of multivariate analysis for spectroscopic data. Spectroscopic methods provide valuable insights into the chemical nature of various sample types and can provide information of physical characteristics specific to the samples. Because spectral data are highly multivariate, they need to be analyzed using multivariate methods. These include powerful visual and analytical tools well suited to unlock important information in the data. Some spectroscopic applications include process monitoring, such as real-time blend uniformity monitoring or raw materials identification by NIR. Spectroscopy may also be used for quality assurance, for instance for predicting wheat protein content by NIR or for classification of vegetable oils using FTIR. With any analysis, and with MVA in particular, Plotting of raw data is important. Before analysis, for instance, a line plot can be used to identify peaks, assess the need for pre-processing, identify outliers, or find groups or trends in the data, etc. The example here shows a set of uh, spectra where one sample in particular stands out with a highly noisy, as a no highly noisy spectrum. After analysis, raw data plots will also be used a lot to verify your results. One of the reasons for using multivariate analysis is that univariate methods are not well suited for multivariate data. Consider the two charts below, which appear to show there is no out-of-control situation, because all the observation points are within the univariate limits. However, if the two process parameters, temperature and pH, are plotted one versus the other, it appears that one observation is indeed outside or different from the rest. This is because these two variables are correlated so that the univariate limits are too wide to detect the fault. In fact, a multivariate limit is needed, as depicted by an ellipse in this plot. This may be interpreted as a design space. A common denominator for most MVA methods is to reduce the number of dimensions in the data to a more manageable number. This can be achieved by PCA, which represents all the variables using principal components, or PCs. Using PCs, all samples can be represented as points in a score plot. The axes represent the ma majority of the total variability and are often found to span latent or underlying information. This scores plot, for instance, represents a uh, data set studying four types of vegetable oils described by FTIR. Along the first axis, or first principal component, we can see three classes of oils clearly separating, whereas the second component distinguishes the light blue class from the rest.
A score plot is always interpreted hand in hand with a loading plot. Loadings represent the importance of the variables in the model and are often plotted as line plots to resemble spectra. There is one loading vector for each PC and the largest and smallest loadings point to the variables important for spanning the variations seen in the scores plot. So the red peak for PC2 here points to the wavelength region where the absorbance values are higher for the light blue class compared to the rest in the scores plot. Once the model is trained and validated, it can be applied for predicting properties of the new samples. This is called projection and it allows you to see similarities or differences between the new samples and the calibration data. Outliers or new classes can be detected as the new samples will be, will be projected onto the scores plot. This is a data set that we just saw an example of in the scores and loadings plot. It is a FTIR spectra of 36 training samples and 40 test samples. The individual samples represent different oil types. And the wavelength range from 3600 to 600 reciprocal centimeters. There is also an indicator variable called vegetable. However, this information is not used in the model building, only for classifying or coloring the samples in the individual plots. So this is a light plot of all the training sample spectra. We can see three large peaks. The two first here, around 2933 and 2863, represent C-age asymmetric and symmetric stretching of methylene groups. Then there is one peak around 1743, which is the carbonyl stretching of carboxyl groups. If we zoom in on one of these, for instance the asymmetric stretching of C-age, we see that there is no difference in absorbance levels between the individual oil types. So the largest peaks do not seem to be the most important ones for distinguishing between the oil types. However, if we zoom in on one of the smaller peaks, such as this one around 3008, this represents the cis double bond stretching on the fatty acid chains. And we see here that this is clearly distinguishing between the individual groups. A different representation of the raw data could be in a scatter plot. So this is a scatter plot of the two of the largest peaks around 2863 and 2933, which is the CH stretching, as well as the a peak around 30-14, which is the cis double bond stretch, stretching. And we see here as well that the cis double bond stretching is important for distinguishing between the different oils and margarines. However, the two CH stretching peaks are not as good for distinguishing between the different oils. Regardless of how we view these three peaks, though there is a difference between the individual oil types, there seems to be no way to distinguish corn margarine from the rest. But if we do a principal component analysis, we hope to find all the information in a reduced number of dimensions. So this is a principal component analysis of all the wavelengths in the data. And we see that the main variability indeed along PC1 spans the difference between the individual oils. So we have the highly unsaturated safflower oil on the left and we have monounsaturated olive oil on the right. 
There is also some information along the second principal component, which is not important for distinguishing between the individual groups. In order to see which variables are important for spanning this information that we see, we see that both the carbonyl stretching and the CH stretching are important for spanning the variation in principal component number two. So it would be interesting to see what the model would look like if we removed those non-important wavelengths to see perhaps if we could be able to distinguish between core margarine and the oils as well. And this is a model where we have removed the non-important information that we saw and we see that corn margarine comes out in the second PC. We see that the cis double bond stretching is important both for PC1 and PC2 and we see that for PC2 there is a wavelength here around 960 that is important for distinguishing the variation we see in C along PC2 which is this, this direction. So this distinguishes corn margarine from the rest. So we can anticipate, based on these scores and loadings, that the corn margarine indeed has higher absorbance values around 960 for the raw FTIR spectra. In order to make a calibration model, it's also important to pre-process the data. And let's see if we can have a included pre-processing which can distinguish the oils even more clearly. So we have done this here with a, with a PCA on standard normal variate transform data and we see that the classifications are more clear and the loadings are more or less the same. As a validation of this uh, model we can also try to project the unknown samples onto this, onto this model. And we have done this here. The blue samples are the calibration samples and the green samples are the test samples. It's perhaps not very easy to see the text of the overlapping points, but all the known types of oil have been classified correctly on top of the calibration samples. So all the green samples here are olive oil, all the green samples here are corn oil and all the green samples here are safflower oil as well as some corn margarine oil in the top cluster here. In addition we have some previously unknown oil types peanut oil, sesame oil, soybean oil and walnut oil. And these are positioned along the principal component number one, but there is no separation along principal component number two. So that indicates that peanut oil, sesame oil, soybean oil and walnut oil are increasingly unsaturated because that's the underlying variation that PC1 spans. It also tells us that uh, these oils have not been heat treated because they have small absorbance levels around 960, which spans, is important for spanning PC2. Today we have been through example applications of multivariate analysis on spectroscopic data, and we have seen the importance of visualizing your data. We have seen the limitations of univariate analysis for multivariate data and quickly been through interpretation of scores and loadings. We have seen how projection of new samples can be very informative and also be used to validate the model. And we have also been through a demonstration in the Unscrambler. In the next few tutorials we will look at topics including data pre-processing, which methods and when to use them, and the importance of validation. In the meantime, you can read more about multivariate analysis or download free software trials at www.kemo.com 
Alternatively, you can post questions to our science team at dataanalysis.blog.camo.com or, or visit one of our social media sites. Thanks for watching and see you next time.